Welcome to Land a House. I'm Seth. Today I'm installing a half inch ram pump. What is a ram pump? It's a water pump that does not need fuel or electricity to operate, only flowing, falling water. I'm installing this pump to bring water up from the creek to a couple of donkeys. I'm also going to be installing a float valve to prevent the stock tank from overflowing. All right, let's go ahead and jump down in the creek and begin installing this ram pump. Whenever you install a ram pump, there are typically four things you have to consider. The head pressure is the first one, and that's the drop in water from the source down to the pump. You have to have three feet minimum, and that will lift water to about 21 feet. And for every additional one foot of drop, it will lift another seven feet up. So three feet is the minimum. I have that right here in my creek. The next is the flow rate. The half inch pump is going to need two gallons per minute to operate. Even if you had 30 gallons flowing in your creek, that two gallons per minute is what you're gonna to need to operate this pump. The third thing to consider is the lift height. So for every one foot of drop going into the pump, it will lift seven feet out. So if you're gonna be lifting to 70 feet in the air, you're gonna to have to have 10, maybe even 11 feet of head pressure going in. I'm only lifting to about 10 feet, so the initial three feet of head pressure is all I'm going to need. The last thing to consider is how much water you need in a day. So filling up these stock tanks here is only gonna need this tiny half inch pump, but if you need more water than about 300 gallons a day, you can step up to the three quarter, the one inch, or even the inch and a quarter pump to provide more water throughout the day. The drive pipe is the pipe that takes water from the source down to where the ram pump is. You can use PVC pipe, or in my case, poly pipe. And this is just the black flexible roll pipe and uh, it is 100 PSI and it is UV resistant, so it's okay to be here in the creek for a long time. I'm going to uh, pull this down until the place that I want the ram pump to rest, and then we'll head back up to the other end of the pipe and get the source water connected. So let me go ahead and pull this down here real quick. I'm here at the upper end of this poly pipe where I'm gonna be installing the intake. So for this intake, I simply have a two inch piece of pipe with a cap on one side, a coupling down to a half inch bushing. And basically there's a bunch of holes drilled into this pipe and that's going to allow the water to go in and keep most of the debris out, leaves and sticks and uh, salamanders and that kind of thing. If I need to, I can open the cap and clean that out. Now. I probably could put a bunch more holes in here and put some window screen over it, and that would also do a good job at keeping out all the silt and other debris. So what I'm gonna do is hook up an adapter. This is a barb fitting on one end and an NPT thread on the other. And that's just gonna go into here and allow this filter screen to connect to my poly pipe. So just take the end of my poly here and press this in. It doesn't have to be super tight at this side because there's no pressure. <laughs> there we go. Let me place this down in the water real quick. For the intake, I have found a place that's deep enough to set this pipe into. So I'm going to uh, sink it all the way down and then I'm gonna place a rock over it so it will uh, hopefully not come back out. All right, now the intake is totally submerged. The water is up a little bit right now due to a rain. So I'm just stacking a few rocks here to make sure that that intake is always underwater. We just made a little pool for it right there. Now, the next step that's very important is to make sure the drive pipe is locked down. So if I step over here for a second, you can see the pipe kind of steps back up here. Well, I want to remove any rocks that I can and get that drive pipe down as far into the water as possible. And that way it won't be uh, having any air pockets. So in order to do that, I'm gonna get some more big rocks and set that on top of the pipe. These rocks will just hold that pipe down so hopefully it doesn't get washed out in any big rains. I have the intake buried right there, looking really nice. And then I have the rest of the poly pipe stretched out here along the creek. And I have put rocks on top of it to make sure that it does not have any high spots as it goes along. Some rocks are bigger than others. Should do a pretty good job of holding this together. All right, let's follow this down the creek to the uh, other end where we can install the ram pump. 
I've been installing ram pumps for about 10 years now, and one of the most frustrating or time-consuming parts of the entire install is the initial prime on the drive pipe. So anytime there is a little bubble or air gap in that pipe, it will prevent the flow of water, and it makes it very difficult to get that flow through the pipe the initial time. So there's a couple of things you can do. You can use a drill attachment, which will pull water through. You can uh, siphon through, which risks getting a lot of water in your lungs or the method I'm about to use. I'm going to disconnect the first union with the drive pipe, and then I'm going to connect this ball valve to the end of the drive pipe. It's already got some Teflon tape on there. I'm just going to get this screwed into place. And that will essentially allow me to close the end of the drive pipe. And so what I'm gonna do is take some water and fill up this pipe, close the valve, walk down to the creek, and then open the valve back up, and that should hopefully pull the siphon for me. So, I just got a bucket of water down here, and a little scoop. I'm just going to begin pouring water down that pipe. A couple of tips when you're doing this. If you pour too quickly, it'll overflow and cause uh, water to spill out over into your bucket. If you go slow enough that there is not a full seal so that air is still getting uh, out, it'll actually help it to uh, fill up faster. I put lots of water in the pipe. Let me open this up and hopefully we get a gush of water and it starts to siphon. Well, no gush of water. In order to keep the ram pump upright, I'm going to be using this decking board. And the main thing I want to do is make sure the unions are free on both sides. And so I like to just use some of this uh, plumber's strap and a couple of uh, exterior screws. And it's pretty easy just to strap these down here. There we go. Easy enough. Fast forward about two weeks, I spent 45 minutes trying to get the drive pipe full of water and never managed to get it full. So I purchased a drill pump. This is gonna use two pieces of garden hose and a drill to get water out of the creek and fill up that drive pipe. Should make this process way easier. Let me show you how it's done real quick. So first of all, I've got this end right here, which is gonna go into the waste valve of the ram pump. And then I've got this other end, which will bring water in from the creek. I'm gonna attach this end of the garden hose going to the drill pump into the waste valve. In theory. All right, there we go. The other end of this hose is going to go onto the drill pump. Next, I hook up the drill to the drill pump. Get some water primed in here. All right, I'm gonna close the delivery pipe on this far end, and this will begin filling water up the drive pipe. I'm gonna run this long enough that it's gonna take all the air out the back end, up at the source. Now that pipe should be totally full. Good, I'm seeing pressure there. Hopefully it's enough to get this drive pipe totally full. I believe that did the trick. You can see here that the waste valve has been tilted down some and turned, and that allows the valve to close easier with less force. So it is now working as it should. Now I'm seeing a little bit of debris in there, so it's probably worth me opening up this pipe and letting the water flow out for a bit. But it is cycling. Yeah, there's some debris in there. In order to stop that from happening, I can simply unscrew this union and let the water flow out on its own for a little while. Now it's time to run the delivery pipe. I'm also using half inch poly pipe and it's gonna go from the pump across the creek over here to where these donkeys are. So let's go ahead and pull this over there. This section of creek here can flood pretty bad. And so I've got some fence posts with a piece of conduit pipe going across the creek so the delivery pipe won't get washed away.
For now, I have the delivery pipe up here at this stock tank. Now in the future, I'm gonna have a float valve which will turn the water off once the tank is full. Now it's time to get the ram pump started. I'm gonna open up the drive pipe. Water will close this valve. And now I'm going to open up the delivery pipe. Water is going to bypass the pump and match the source in this delivery pipe. Now, there are a couple ways you can fill that delivery pipe. You can sit here and click this valve a hundred times, or you can hook up the drill pump and fill this up that way. Obviously the drill pump is gonna be a much faster way, and so that is what I'm going to do. I have the drive pipe closed, the delivery pipe open, and once again, I'm gonna use this drill pump here. Shouldn't take much. All right, that should be enough. Now that I have lots of water in the delivery pipe, I would like to see this thing cycle on its own. So hopefully, we can get uh, this right here to build pressure in the tank. And we have output. There we go. That right there doesn't look like much, but it will fill up this tank over the period of one or two days, no problem. I'll have to uh, come back later and see how it's doing. Like I said before though, be sure to stay tuned because I will be installing a float valve on this tank and you can see how that is performing. I decided to go ahead and install this float valve without you and just post it here at the end of the video. So if I zoom in close here, you can see the water is pouring out of that float valve. And as soon as I close it, the water stops. So that will fill this up to that point. The float will float and uh, stop the water output. Good solution to keep this stock tank from overflowing. And that concludes the install of the half inch ram pump to bring water up to these two donkeys back behind me here. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, be sure to hit that thumbs up. And remember, I have four different sizes of ram pump available at landhouse.com. Links in the description down below. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.